All right, so uh, admittedly, this is a pretty interesting problem to consider, uh, one that I didn't think of until I was presented with it. So let's dive in. The magnetic field on the axis of a circular current loop is far from uniform. It falls off sharply with increasing z. Remember the square root z term from the uh, when we found it with B.O. Savart. Um, but you can produce a more... Uh, nearly uniform field by using two such loops at a distance d apart. A. Find a field B as a function of z and show that the first derivative or partial derivative of z is zero at the point midway between them, i.e. where z is equal to zero. And if you pick d just right, the second derivative of b will also vanish. So now we need to determine what d is such that the second derivative is equal to zero at the midpoint and find the resultant magnetic field at the center. All right, so let's draw this out. We get a z-axis here, uh, z equals zero being the midpoint of the two loops that are separated by distance d. Many of you probably know what this is called, so I'll save it for that part. All right, we already found the, uh, well, we already found what the field was before, so now we'll just modify them and use superposition to add the two loops together. You see that we have b equal mu naught i r squared divided by 2, times 1 over r squared plus uh, d over 2 plus z squared, because that's the separation distance, makes sense, to the 3 halves power, and then the same thing but minus z since we're below. Okay, makes sense there as well. Um, now taking the derivative clearly can get messy, so take it step by step. Use the power rule. We're going to have a negative 3 halves from the power rule uh, times this 2 from the inside square from chain rule and then so forth. On the second term, we'll have a negative one from another iteration of chain rule. Simplify this, use your algebra, um, and to simply evaluate the set zero. If we plug zero in, you see that the two terms come together as such, and they cancel. That's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty nifty. All right, moving on. Uh, so, for those who don't know, this arrangement is known as a Helmholtz, Helmholtz coil. Excuse me. It's a convenient way of producing relatively uniform fields in a laboratory. All right, so now we need to differentiate this field again. Uh, more product rules, more algebra, more mess. I'll just let the work speak for itself here. Um, once you simplify this down, which, to be honest, at this point, I would just use a computer system to help you so you're not left doing tedious work. Uh, the important part here is evaluating it at the midpoint and then uh, seeing what this actually condenses to. After plugging in zero, uh, we see that we get something that's equal to 3 mu naught i r squared divided by r squared plus d over 2 squared to 7 halves power. Uh, but the important part is that we're left with a d squared minus r squared. So this is only equal to zero if d equals r, where r is the radius of the loop itself. So that is really cool to consider because now you're kind of self-contained in this self-symmetric way where your parameter space is the same as uh, your constant space. Um, so moving forward, evaluating the field at zero, we end up with the, uh, a field strength of 8 mu naught i over 5 to 3 halves power times r. That is pretty darn cool. I'm glad he came up with this.